Here's a Michael Jordan and Charles Barkley lie that we all thought was true. Considering Michael Jordan is the greatest player of all time, and he's not only one of the greatest players, one of the greatest winners, one of the greatest trash talkers, one of the greatest competitors, he's one of the most cutthroat teammates there will obviously be. And that means there are many, many stories of him, especially now with social media and ways to share things with a simple click of a button. But what if I told you you can't always believe everything you hear or read? I mean, it sounds obvious, but when it's in the moment, sometimes you can't help but believe a story is true. I mean, that's what makes a great story. You want certain stories to be true because in the end, that's what makes a good story. One that is unbelievable, but is also believable at the same time, if that makes any sense. Here's one story that you probably have heard before because it's one of the most shared around stories about MJ and Charles Barkley. It's been posted on websites, all over social media, on YouTube. It's been one of the most released stories about MJ and Charles Barkley. It's almost known as fact in the NBA world, but I'm here to say that that story is actually false. And the story goes like this. In 1993, the Chicago Bulls and the Phoenix Suns were in a heated NBA Finals matchup. The Bulls were trying to three-peat, but the Suns were led by Charles Barkley, the MVP of the league. And the Suns also finished the top seed in the league, so they were no easy matchup. The Bulls won Game 1 by 8 points, Game 2 by 3 points, and in Game 3 of the NBA Finals, the Suns defeated the Bulls in triple overtime, 129-121. to so at this point, the series is a 2-1 lead by the Bulls, but with a game 2 loss only by 3 points, this really could be going either way. This was a close series. And that's why, the day before game 4 of the Bulls-Suns matchup, with the Bulls leading 2 games to 1, Jordan and Barkley went golfing. Which, let's be honest, is not the most common thing to do, even if you're the best of friends. Don't think that KD and LeBron would have gone golfing during the finals, or if we're talking about real best friends, don't think that, let's say, this is very hypothetical right now, but let's say Wade and LeBron met up in the finals. Don't think that they're going to go golfing during the finals. It just doesn't happen. So that should be your first clue. I mean, that can just wait till the finals is over. But anyway, apparently they played 48 holes of golf and Michael Jordan bought Charles Barkley a $20,000 diamond earring. Former Bulls assistant coach Johnny Batch asked MJ, what did you do all that for? Michael responded, he won't get in my way the rest of the series. What's $20,000 to me anyway? Charles thinks that we're great friends. I hate that fat f Jordan dropped 55 points in game four and Barkley never touched him once. So yeah, that's the story. You've probably heard it before. It's a pretty well-known story. It's a pretty good story, but it's not real. It never happened. I mean, parts of it did, but according to Charles Barkley in an interview with Graham Bensinger, he claims it never happens, and he just laughs every time he hears the story. So 93 NBA Finals, yeah. your son stunned the Bulls uh, to bring the series uh, back to Phoenix. The Bulls are up three games uh, to two, and uh, you say to Michael that you don't want to uh, play golf cards or you know hang out when you get back to Phoenix that, and, you know, and then what happened? That's one of the biggest misconceptions ever. Really? You know, the, it, I've heard that story. Uh, me and Michael never played uh, golf or had dinner during the finals. I mean, we understand it was a competition. And I heard that, I've heard this before, that Michael took me out and buttered me up on the golf course and the dinner. And I was just kind of laughing. And we, were, we always laugh about it. These are big public, I mean, Sports Illustrated. I read that in an SI profile. Uh, so from... I, I know I like the way you read. We, we were friends during and we were friends after. But this notion that he took me, I heard the same thing about Patrick Ewing. He took us out to dinner to butter us up so we wouldn't compete. First of all, if you know Michael, there's no person you want to beat more. There's no person you want to beat more than Michael. You know, he can talk trash with the best of them. So you wanted to beat him. The craziest thing about all this is I don't blame anyone for believing this story. I did. Number one, Jordan, no matter how good he was, was a complete dick. Number two, even Charles Barkley's own teammates believe this story. Former Suns reserve Tim Kempton, who is now the team's radio broadcaster, he said this about the 1993 NBA Finals. 
He had a recollection of Barkley and Jordan together, a lot. And since Barkley was the team's leader, there was no one in the locker room who was going to tell him that he should cool his friendship with Jordan. And I quote, The relationship with Charles and Michael, we thought it was a little bit covered up, Kempton told Sporting News. The relationship between Barkley and Jordan, and as much time as they spent together at the Biltmore playing golf, going out at night, it wasn't broadcast that much. I don't know if that's because it was Michael and people covering it up at the time did not want to talk about that relationship or what. To this day, really, it has not been talked about as much. What Michael and Chuck were and their friendship. Which let's be honest, this is pretty crazy. Imagine your own teammates thinking that you're hanging out with the other team's best player during the NBA Finals and no one wants to talk to him about it. To me that just sounds like some really bad team chemistry. But it wasn't just Tim Kempton either. Another teammate of Barkley said this. The Suns big man, Mark West, shrugged off the suggestion that Barkley's friendship with Jordan was a problem, especially because it would have been difficult to complain about Barkley's play since he was the MVP, and also there were 62 wins, which was better than ever before. But he did say when push come to shove, Barkley might have been a little bit more reluctant to push and shove Jordan. He said this. When he stepped on the floor, at least for us, we won 62 games and couldn't have gotten to the finals without him. I would say though, his friendship probably kept him from hitting Michael as much as he might have hit somebody else. Because Charles would knock somebody down if he's coming to the basket. If he hit Michael, I don't think he hit him as hard as he hit somebody else. But that's just what we had to live with. I think this shows that not only can the public get misled, but it shows that the media can mislead anyone. Even teammates of the players involved in the story, which is just insane. Anyway, Barkley said this and I quote, They say we played golf together every day. We never played golf. They say we had dinner together every night. We never had dinner. So we always found it funny that people said we spent every night together when we never saw each other during the finals. Something that you can get out of this story though, is that MJ scored 40 or more points in 4 consecutive games of the NBA Finals, setting a record and averaged an NBA Finals record of 41 points per game for that series, which is just insane when you think about it, and it's the truth. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, let me know what you guys think down below, I just want to make sure that subscribers of mine know what's real and what actually happened, and I can tell you what's real and what's fake when I find out about it, but anyway. If you guys want to follow me on Instagram, drop a like on the video and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. And don't forget to hit the bell next to my name so you don't miss an upload. That would be very much appreciated. And I'll see you guys in my next video. I'm out. Peace.